Well, just, uh, you just recently launched a quite exciting workflow for the Android smartphone, meaning that you are now able to uh, capture and uh, store your pictures in DNG format on your smartphone. Will that mean a kind of a resurrection to the good old DNG format, which, which in fact has been on the market for around 10 years now? Well, we can, we can only see uh, how the market reacts to the release that we just did. But DNG has been pretty uh, alive and well in a number of different cameras and formats. And we see a large number of people that are using DNG as their preferred uh, file format, even on Lightroom desktop, uh, using the DNG converter tool or, or converting the D DNG inside of Lightroom itself. Uh, however, like the ability to capture in DNG, as we know, there's only a few devices out there that do that. So now with the uh, inclusion of DNG inside of the Android operating system since Lollipop 5.0, um, there's a lot more opportunity for people to capture in DNG. And I feel like through a combination of uh, renewed focus on the software side, but also through all of the uh, emphasis that camera manufacturers or phone manufacturers have been putting into the quality of their cameras, we're going to see more and more photographers looking at their smartphone devices as uh, serious or, or real opportunities to capture photos mm. and I feel like that might have a, a great opportunity to continue to drive the growth and expansion of DNG as a format. Yeah. So what you're saying is that the photographers will use their smartphones as a kind of B camera uh, and work with this workflow. I can definitely imagine that happening. The, the thing that I remember of hearing both when I was studying photography but also when speaking to some of my favorite photographers uh, that the most important thing is to always have a camera with you. And we know that having a smartphone is literally with us all the time, or I shouldn't say literally. I think when we take a shower, we don't use our smartphone. But other than that time, uh, they're with us by our sides almost all the time. And having a device that is getting better and better and more and more capable of capturing photos because of improvements to sensor technology, improvements to lens technology, uh, and improvements to uh, the processor and, and abilities to capture really high-quality uh, images, in our hands, it's going to really uh, give an opportunity, like you said, as a, as a great e camera. Mm. And with, our, with all the possibilities we have today with the smart apps and stuff like that, you foresee that the DNG will go right into Lightroom and Photoshop and uh, end up as a professional format as well. Right. I mean, that's what we're seeing right now with the reaction since we released the software uh, was very, very positive. Uh, because of the ability to shoot DNG directly into Lightroom. Uh, as many people have pointed out, the announcement on Monday was not the first time DNG was possible on Android. It's been possible on Android, as I mentioned, since Lollipop 5.0. And that, at that time, um, we had worked very closely with Google to present that DNG workflow as part of the operating system. So it's been around for, for a little while now that people could do this, but what we did was by adding a camera into the uh, experience of Lightroom. Now the files are going directly into the Lightroom ecosystem. And they're uploading directly, synchronizing with Lightroom Web as well as Lightroom Desktop. And they're also enabling us to do things a little differently. So it's giving us a foundation to do more um, as we see the abilities come about. So we can now, since we're capturing in the raw format and since we also uh, have a, a very well-received uh, like raw conversion tool, which is Lightroom, Room or the Adobe Camera Raw, um, we have the ability to know exactly how the DNG file format works, how exactly our image pipeline works, and what ways we can take most advantage of it, and do it all together, saving time, saving effort, but even potentially changing the way we capture photos so that we can then uh, process them accordingly using the technology we have down on the stream. Mm. So there are a lot of opportunities that come about from this. And we see really this uh, release as more of like the, the 1.0 of the camera experience. It's, yeah. it's by no means what we expect to the final camera to look like. It's just the first step to create that foundation so we can then start adding on additional technologies, additional functionality, uh, and additional abilities based off of some of the unique uh, technology that we have and some of the unique processes abilities that, that Adobe has. Okay. And later on, we will all see the capture function on the tablet. That's right, yes. Uh, that was something that, um, unfortunately, we ran into some issues late in, in the process, and the, the, it, the 
just wasn't moving. So <laughs> we had to make the uh, the quick decision of like, all right, well, we want to make sure that it gets out there somewhere. And we also don't want to have a bad experience uh, for users of tablets. Uh, and I saw many, many people using their tablets at Mobile Congress as capture devices. So it's very clear that capturing uh, with a tablet is, is a uh, focus on for many people. And we're definitely going to be working on that and adding that back in. Okay. And the next question, of course, is what about what about uh, iOS? Uh, you told me before that it's a little bit of a technical question. Right. So there's, of course, there's the uh, people. We've got a, a large number of customers that are also on iOS. As soon as we announced this, of course, we had many people asking us, uh, confirming what is the, uh, the roadmap or will we ever have RAW on the iOS platform? And, and the answer is simply that Android supports RAW at the operating system level, which is how we're able to access it. Of course, it was through our interactions with Google uh, that we were able to get that to work. And uh, of course, Apple is a strong partner of Adobe's. We've worked very closely together with them. And there's always an open dialogue going back and forth uh, between Adobe and Apple. So um, there, there is always the opportunity and the possibility. Unfortunately, there's just nothing that we could uh, comment at this point whether or not we can or cannot and mm. at what point it might or may not happen. Yeah. So far, two of the only uh, major brands that have adopted the TNT format as a capture format is Leica and Hasselblad. Do you foresee that other uh, brands will uh, adopt the format in the future to come? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, there's always a lot of reasons and rationale that we see that the um, different manufacturers use for which format that they want to ascribe to. And we're always having ongoing conversations with different manufacturers and, and discussing the pros and cons and what we uh, feel like it would be the best case or the best user experience. Uh, however, it's ultimately entirely up to the manufacturer. We can we can provide the solution, but it's up to the manufacturer to select the solution. And so far, we haven't heard anything, any news uh, one way or the other, if anybody will uh, jump on and adapt it as well. Mm. And the reason why I'm asking this is, of course, that uh, photographers uh, discuss very often, should I use DNG, should I use RAW, or should I shoot in RAW and then convert to DNG? And there are kind of mixed emotions about those uh, formats, RAW on the one side and DNG on the other side, even right. if even if both uh, are to, to consider as RAW formats. But uh, mm -hmm. I guess it's up to your personal taste what to use. Definitely. There, there's reasons why you should use one, reasons why you should use the other. I mean, ultimately, uh, the file that's coming out of your camera, uh, the, the best thing to do is to shoot in RAW, regardless if it's DNG or the RAW format. You get a lot more value, a lot more headroom. And we're seeing that today, uh, storage costs are going down quite considerably. We see that uh, hard drive costs and storage cards and internet speeds are coming faster and faster. Online storage costs are going down. So. Uh, it seems like those are happening faster than the file sizes grow. So we have the opportunity to capture in raw format and give ourselves the maximum ability uh, to interact with our images with the highest quality from now until the future. So shooting in raw is, is always the recommended approach from a photographer's perspective. And uh, using DNG, of course, there are benefits of using DNG. Um, but as you mentioned before, the, there is always going to be the decision that somebody would have to make whether or not they want to use DNG or not. Mm. Uh, for instance, if we're talking about JPEG, the JPEG standard is preserved by the JPEG body on an international uh, basis. What about uh, DNG? Is it uh, in any way uh, ISO certified or whatever? I'm actually not sure if it's been ISO certified. I know that there was a lot of discussion uh, with the industry at large to ensure that DNG would be something that would be able to move on and live beyond Uh, the current round of companies, as we as we know, uh, corporations may come, may they may go, and it's important that our images have the ability to stay on. And there was a large uh, conversation and discussion on how can we ensure longevity of the file format. So uh, there was a lot of thought, a lot of uh, discussion put into that, how we could make it possible to uh, be accessible for future generations. Um, but whether or not it's been certified by any governmental or international standard, I actually personally don't know. Yeah, I can look it up. <laughs> But I guess in your in your own words, so you would say that Adobe and DNG is here to stay. Well, of course, uh, <laughs> Adobe, has been, uh, Adobe has shown for a long time that they've been able to adapt to the changing climates, um, and that's one of the reasons why I, the team, of, I, I feel very excited about Adobe as a company and as their ability to 
see the changes happening. This is uh, my role at Adobe is to uh, manage the mobile photography experience. And I think it's really great that they uh, have given the team a huge amount of uh, flexibility and leeway to identify what are the opportunities and, and expectations and desires and needs of uh, photographers as they evolve into the mobile world. And as we talked about and you mentioned, the idea of being able to use, to start off with, your mobile device as a B camera now is becoming more and more realistic. So we need to make sure that we provide a great experience. And that's how I see Adobe continuing to evolve uh, as we see every year new products, new offerings, uh, new strategies and approaches.